Hello, uh, my name is Dr Sadie Jones and I work at the University of Southampton and I've been leading the uh, hashtag Southern Astro Art Project for the last four years. Um, the project started um, because we had uh, about 4,000 of these uh, photographic plates which were basically photos from uh, kind of between the 1960s and the 1980s which were taken of the whole of um, the well, the whole of the night sky that can be observed from either the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere using um, these massive survey telescopes. But basically, in the kind of early, um, kind of late eighties, early nineties, where all of these photos were available um, online, um, and the photos were much easier to use in a kind of digital format than these kind of um, negatives. So we the department basically didn't need them anymore and we decided to give them away to artists. Now, um, almost a hundred different emerging artists from across the world have created artworks which we've exhibited at over maybe, yeah, at least eight exhibits we've run. Um, uh, but this uh, kind of uh, few slides I'm going to give today is um, to introduce uh, the, the research that, that kind of we we are trying to promote as part of this um, this art science project because these older um, these these photographs were taken as a way of surveying the whole sky and trying to document everything that was going on uh, and these days the astronomers at the University of Hampton are also trying to survey the sky but they're focusing on a specific research question. And the, the research question they're trying to figure out is basically um, the effect that dark energy is having on the universe. So I will uh, kind of explain in the following few slides how we can, um, why the, um, the astronomers who are using something called the Dark Energy Survey uh, are trying to survey uh, galaxies in order to figure out. Uh, the mysteries of dark energy. Uh, so this is a, a supernova, which is uh, an explosion at the end of the life of a star, which I will uh, explain a little bit more about later. This is a picture of some of the artwork that was created in our kind of real life face to face workshops that were part of our uh, art exhibits at various locations. Uh, mainly the ones we run were in the Southampton University campus and in uh, art galleries and in um, a church in Poole as part of Light at Poole. Uh, this is a piece of artwork uh, by Helen Corley, which was uh, kind of inspired by the, the plates that we gave out. And you can see it, it's um, in a very nice location here. And this is one of the uh, members of the public, and I'm explaining the plate to them at uh, our Light at Pool exhibit. Okay, so who am I? A little bit more about me. Uh, my own research is actually in supermassive black holes. Here you can see an artist's impression of a supermassive black hole. Um, some of these supermassive black holes at the centres of galaxies are what we call very active. So they have a very bright centre and also some of them have these jets, which again are very mysterious and we don't really know uh, how jets work. Uh, but today I'm going to focus uh, on talking about stars, supernova and uh, kind of what kind of myster mysteries supernova can reveal to astronomers who I work with. Uh, normally, when we are allowed to, uh, I take a mobile planetarium out into schools um, and talk about all the different research that we do at the university. Okay, so I'm actually in Wales at the moment, but the University of Southampton is in the south of England. You can see it here on Google Maps. Um, this is a kind of picture of Southampton uh, kind of city centre. This is, this is basically uh, the bar gate, which is kind of what remains of the, um, the city walls that used to go around Southampton. Uh, unfortunately, Southampton was very much bombed in the, in the, in the Second World War, so uh, a lot of the more kind of historic uh, <laughs> buildings and things were destroyed, but there is still some, some nice parts that have, have, have stayed. And Southampton is obviously very famous for uh, the place where the Titanic sailed from. 
Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'm currently in Wales. I'm in the South Wales, uh, roughly at this location on the map. And I'm here uh, for, the, for the third lockdown, at least, um, with my parents and their three dogs, Billy, uh, Milo and Stella. Um, so I, I think Wales is a lovely place. This is a, a picture of Snowdonia, which is in the north of Wales. And I've been there. This isn't a picture I've taken, but um, it is very beautiful. Um, so yeah, so normally I'm in, in Southampton working at the university, but because of the lockdown, I'm here in Wales. Uh, why did I want to take up astronomy? Well, in school, I really loved physics and maths, um, but I also really kind of felt myself to be quite creative. So I also really liked art and English. So I essentially kind of compromised when I went to A-levels by doing uh, physics, maths and computing, but then also choosing art to kind of keep the creative side of me going. I also dreamed of being an astronaut at that kind of age when I was about 14. Um, but I guess I thought maybe uh, because I had uh, or have asthma and bad eyesight and normally wear glasses that um, I probably wouldn't be chosen for the astronaut program. Uh, so I thought I was still fascinated by space so I thought I could be um, an astrophysicist and explore um, explore space from the ground using telescopes and very cool pictures of Hubble such as this one uh, from the Hubble Space Telescope were coming out at the time. Now I should mention here that this is not a true colour image, this isn't how your eyes would see um, this dust and gas in space but what happens is the, the Hubble Telescope is able to see um, different wavelengths of light using different filters and when the astronomers are trying to uh, kind of understand what's going on uh, in in between the dust and gas in in the galaxy, they um, they will assign different colours to represent different wavelengths of light, which is why you often see these very beautifully coloured diagrams. But again, this isn't sadly what your eyes would see. Okay, so um, when I decided that I wanted to do um, astrophysics, I did a four year masters in Cardiff University and there I was lucky enough to do some research with the Fox telescope. Uh, the Fox telescope, uh, I think the one in this picture is in Hawaii, but I wasn't unfortunately able to go to Hawaii, um, but I was still able to uh, control the telescope online and you can still do this. Um, you can sign up and get a free account and you can take images with this massive telescope yourself using the internet. Um, so I really enjoyed this part of my research and then I went on to do another four years uh, in Southampton University doing what is called a PhD. So this is uh, a job when you're doing a PhD uh, or at least in science you're, you're paid to do that job but you're still classed as a student so you don't have to pay taxes and things like that. So as part of my PhD I've got to go and do lots and lots of traveling um, and I still get to do, I'm still very lucky I get to do lots of traveling as part of my job um, now which is basically full-time uh, public engagement and outreach with astronomy. So here you can see me uh, with one of my uh, colleagues Charlotte, she is a researcher in Supernova and we actually went to this telescope, uh, the NTT telescope in Chile uh, to observe uh, for her research uh, across uh, Christmas Day. So this is us on Christmas Day wearing our Christmas head attire. Uh, I've also been lucky enough to go to places like Japan where I was at the Communicating Astronomy with the Public Conference. Um, and normally when you go to a conference or, or travel for your job, you're then kind of allowed to do a few weeks afterwards where you're on holiday. So uh, exploring uh, parts of Chile following my work there with Charlotte. Okay, so now, like I said, my job is uh, full-time running kind of talks uh, about astronomy, um, trying to think of 
of ways to demonstrate um, our our astronomy and astrophysics research. Uh, yeah, so as well as being able to go to uh, places like Glastonbury Festival and Bestival on the Isle of Wight when that used to happen uh, and talk to people about uh, the research, um, I've also been part of the teaching staff on the Tenerife field trip. So in this picture here, you can see some of the, uh, these are actually the solar telescopes that are part of the, um, the observatory um, on the island of Tenerife. Uh, so we take second year students um, normally to Tenerife for two weeks and the first week they design a gamma ray uh, telescope and in the second week they um, go up the mountain and we observe. Uh, I'm always kind of trying to look for ways that I can uh, kind of still tap into um, the creative side of me if you like. So I've performed uh, comedy about uh, my black hole research and also at the moment I'm um, part of um, a science poetry performance that we're doing uh, in two weeks time for Science Week and I'm going to perform uh, poems about my astrophysics research. Uh, I also normally play a sport called roller derby which is basically like um, well, you play on roller skates, but it's a full contact sport, but it's a, um, a female dominated sport and it's really fun. And I'm hoping to be able to play that again soon.